位记者朋友，大家下午好。Good afternoon. Welcome to today's briefing. Now, please questions. Iran, Navy, Iran, and Pakistan, India. Iranian military general announced that it will establish a new navy alliance.、Uh, what's your comment? Safeguarding the peace and stability in the Gulf region is vital to the development of the region and the people. China supports regional countries to diffuse differences through dialogue and consultation, realize friendly neighborliness, supports regional countries' efforts of enhancing unity and self-strength, and seizing their own destiny in their own hands. As a good friend of regional countries, China will continue to play an active and constructive role in promoting regional peace and stability. Next one, please. 呃、uh, ，Thank you. Question from AFP.、Uh, the United States military has said that a Chinese navy ship maneuvered in an unsafe manner near an American military ship in the Taiwan Strait on Saturday, with the distance between the ships reportedly less than 140 meters. Does the Foreign Ministry have any comment on this matter? Thank you. 法新社记者提问：美国军方官员称，中国军舰在呃于周二在台湾海峡以不安全的方式靠近了一艘美国驱逐舰，距离这艘美国军舰呃少于一百四十米。中方对此有何评论？中国人民解放军。The spokesperson of the PLA, Eastern Theater Command, has made a statement on this, which you may refer to. I want to stress that the fact is that the U.S. side made provocations first, and the Chinese side only responded by handling the incident in accordance with relevant laws and regulations. China remains committed to safeguarding the freedom of navigation and overflight all countries are entitled to under international law. The actions taken by the Chinese military are necessary steps in response to the provocations by the country concerned. These actions are completely justified, lawful, safe, and professional. Countries concerned stirring up troubles in the Taiwan Strait and is firmly determined to defend its sovereignty and security and regional peace and stability. Next one, please. 谢发言人总台央视记者提问：我们注意到在日前举行的香格里拉对话。CCTV. We noted that during the recent Shangri-La dialogue, leaders of many countries, including Indonesia and Singapore, said they don't want to see a new Cold War or choose sides between China and the U.S. Do you have any comment? These remarks fully show that a certain countries attempt to launch a new Cold War in Asia and force regional countries to choose sides has led to extensive high alert and strong opposition from countries in the region. It is a common aspiration of countries in the region to maintain strategic autonomy. And safeguard the stability and development of the region. In particular, a certain country, while claiming to uphold freedom and openness and safeguarding peace and prosperity, is in fact patching up various military blocks and advancing the forming of a NATO replica in Asia Pacific. Countries in the region have a clear attitude to this. They oppose forming various military blocks, don't welcome a NATO replica. Don't accept Europe-style block confrontation, and don't allow the resurgence of any Cold War or Hot War in Asia. Asia is the most vigorous and promising region in the world in terms of growth. It should become a big stage for win-win cooperation rather than be divided into exclusive small blocks. Asian countries welcome joint efforts to make achievements and refuse attempts to make trouble. China firmly supports ASEAN centrality and an inclusive regional cooperation framework, and would like to work with ASEAN countries and other partners in the region to uphold the spirit of open and win-win cooperation, oppose any words and deeds that instigate block confrontation in Asia, and jointly build Asia into a pillar for peace, a pioneer for development, and a promising land for cooperation. 
Who has he met with and who else will he be meeting during his trip here? How many days will he be in China for? And um, he is said to be joined by the uh, U.S. National Security Council's official, Sarah Beren. Is Ms. Beren here already? And is she also attending the same meetings as Mr. Crittenbrink? Thank you. This morning, Director General of the Department of North American and Oceania Affairs of China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Yang Tao, held talks with Assistant Secretary Quintenberg and Ms. Baring. Vice Minister of Foreign Minister Ma Zhaoxu will meet with them this afternoon. For specifics, please check back for the readouts. Next one, please. 谢谢,呃,礼拜中央卫视记者提问,2023年6月11日至12日在沙特阿拉伯利亚的将举办中央合作论坛第十届企业。the 10th Entrepreneurs Meeting between China and the Arab countries will be held in uh, 2023. What's your expectation for this event? The China Arab Business Conference and Investment Seminar is an important event under the framework of the China Arab Cooperation Forum. It was jointly held by China Council for the Promotion of International Trade and the Arab League Secretariat. It is the ninth business conference and the seventh investment seminar since it was launched in 2005. This year's event will be held in Saudi Arabia from June 11th to the 12th. At the end of last year, the first China Arab State Summit was successfully held, injecting new and strong impetus for the development of China Arab State's relations and the practical cooperation in various fields. We expect that business communities of the two sides can have in depth exchange on cooperation at the event and hope that fruitful results can be achieved so as to make new contribution to the development of China Arab State's relations and development of both sides. Next one, please. Question from NBC. Uh, given the close encounter in the Taiwan Strait on the weekend and a recent encounter between a U.S. aircraft and Chinese aircraft over the South China Sea last week, should any foreign aircraft or maritime vessel expect the same sort of encounter with Chinese jets or ships when traversing? these areas. From China's perspective, uh, is the message now, this is standard operating procedure or the new norm? 美国广播公司的记者考虑到最近比如说上周在台南海和台湾海峡地区中方和美方的舰机发生了近距离的接触那么以后美方在美方的飞机和海上的船只在穿越这些地区的时候也会发生与中方船只和飞机类似的接触
uh, responded saying that it was alarmed by the detentions. Uh, at the same time, the US and Canadian consulates in Hong Kong also shared sentiment on social media, marking the, the anniversary. What is the ministry's comment? Thank you. 周日也就是天安门事件纪念日时 the Chinese government has already drawn a clear conclusion on the political disturbance in the late 1980s. We firmly support the Hong Kong ICR government to perform their duty in accordance with the law and make utmost efforts to safeguard national security and prosperity and stability in Hong Kong. I want to stress that any attempt to smear China and interfere in China's internal affairs under the excuse will not succeed. Next one, please. CCTV China and Argentina signed the cooperation plan between the government of the People's Republic of China and the government of Argentina. Can you share more about the Belt and Road cooperation between China and Latin American countries? In February last year, China and Argentina signed an MOU on jointly building the BRI, marking the official participation of Argentina in the BRI. The cooperation plan signed between the two countries has great significance to deepening strategic synergy and practical cooperation. It will also provide impetus for deeper and more substantive BRI cooperation between China and the Latin American Caribbean countries. This year marks the 10th anniversary of the BRI proposed by President Xi Jinping. BRI cooperation has improved the life of the peoples and brought the two continents closer together. As of today, the French Circle of China-Latin America BRI cooperation has covered 21 countries. China has been Latin America's second largest trading partner for 10 consecutive years. Trade between the two sides hit a new record last year. We believe that with the support of BRI cooperation, the China-LAC relationship in the new era characterized by equality, mutual benefits, innovation, openness, and benefits for the people will continue to deepen and the cross-Pacific road of friendship and cooperation will lead to broader prospects. Next one, please. Dragon TV, a delegation from the Arab League recently visited Xinjiang. Could you share more with us? From May the 30th to June the 2nd, a delegation from the Arab League paid a visit to Xinjiang. They comprised more than 30 officials from 16 Arab countries, including Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and Algeria, as well as the Secretariat of the Arab League. During their trip, the delegation traveled to Wurumuchi and Kashgar, where they visited mosques, Islamic institutes, local companies, old towns, and an exhibition on counterterrorism de-radicalization, worshipped in mosques with the locals, and got a first-hand experience of their happy life. Members of the delegation said that through the visit, they saw a prosperous Xinjiang and truly appreciated the extraordinary achievements of China's development model, especially its victory in a tough battle against extreme poverty. They noted that the region does not match what is portrayed by Western media, and it boasts social harmony and a rapidly growing economy, with residents of all ethnic groups working and living in peace. Progress is made at a faster pace in various sectors, and the Muslims freely exercise their ethnic and religious rights in accordance with the law. The so-called genocide and religious persecution are nothing but lies. Arab countries appreciated China's care for the Muslims in Xinjiang and people of other ethnic backgrounds and expressed their firm support to China's effort in upholding Xinjiang's development and stability. Arab countries have always upheld justice when it comes to issues related to Xinjiang. What, is the, what the Arab League delegation has seen with their own eyes in Xinjiang once again shows that truths will not be hidden by lies and those who seek to smear China by manipulating Xinjiang-related issues will not have their way. China welcomes friends from all countries to visit Xinjiang and experience firsthand the region's prosperity, stability, and harmony. Next one, please. Thank you. 
Um, we have a question um, related to the uh, encounter in the Taiwan Strait. Uh, the U.S. Navy has released a video showing the Chinese warship crossing in front of the U.S. destroyer in the Taiwan Strait over the weekend. U.S., as we know, call it an unsafe interaction. Um, could we have any more remarks on this? Thank you. Wolunti 我刚才已经介绍了。I have briefed you on relevant information. It was the U.S. side who made provocations first, and the Chinese side only responded by handling the incident in accordance with relevant laws and regulations. And China's response are completely justified, lawful, safe, and professional. It is the U.S. side who needs to reflect on the mistakes they made. Thank you. Next one, please. Anything else? That's the end of today's briefing. Thank you for coming.